Hello and welcome to this next segment of CD spectroscopy and MOS bar spectroscopy for chemist. My name is Arnab Datta and I am an associate professor in the department of chemistry IIT Bombay. And today we are going to take a few more examples where we will look how MOS bar spectroscopy can aid us to understand the mixed valency. So we are discussing this from the last segment. So we are going to take our example number 10 over here. So today we are going to take a another trinuclear molecule but over here only two of them is actually our iron and there is a cobalt in between and there is another iron. So two iron centered by a cobalt. Now this is only the metal centers I am writing, I also have to write the ligands around it. So let us take a look what are the ligands present in this particular molecule. So first of all we are having 3 nitrogens over here and these are all amine nitrogen which is coordinated to this and this one is coordinated. So each of the nitrogen you can see it is bind with the other nitrogen by a ethylene linker CH2 CH2 linker. So each of them so that is the interaction over here and now there other ligands on this particular side and they are all sulfurs and these sulfurs are coordinated with another chain. So the middle nitrogen captures the middle sulfur, the top one captures the top nitrogen and same for the bottom one and they are connected with the linker chain over here and these sulfurs coordinate with the cobalt. And we expect the same thing on the other side is present and these sulfur atoms are present with the coordination site of the iron and the rest of it, it is again fulfilled by the 3 nitrogens. So quite the similar looking symmetric kind of ligand. So these 3 nitrogens over here it is going to replicate it on the other side of the terminal and over here as we just discussed these nitrogens are connected with ethylene ring. So that is how it is connected and the sulfurs are also connected. So this is the structure of the full molecule and over here what is the oxygen state we are talking about? Iron over here actually having an oxygen state of 3, cobalt also 3 and one iron is in 2 state. So that is the thing we have to look into there is 2 iron one is plus 3, one is plus 2 am I going to see the mixed valency or not. So that is the question we are trying to answer with this particular example and what is the role of this cobalt is playing in between. So when we first started looking into the MOS bus spectroscopy, so I am drawing the graphs problem, it is the transmittance and it is the velocity which is actually coming for the how I am moving the Mosbar source with respect to the sample, with respect to the Doppler effect that is actually represented over here which is actually a representative of energy scale over here. So when you first do that at higher temperature, by high temperature I mean 353 Kelvin. So it is almost 80 degree centigrade quite hot over there we are seeing only one set of iron center. Then we go to a little bit lower temperature. We continue to see these two peaks. 
but additionally we started seeing something else. So, we started seeing other peak coming out and another set of signals. this is the red one and I am also drawing how it looks like for the original signal stays there and this is we are seeing at 297 Kelvin. 298 Kelvin room temperature. Then when we go further down what we are able to see is this, this particular signals are actually sh started shrinking down. This is happening at 80 Kelvin, so quite low temperature close to liquid nitrogen burning point. So, this original black trace of the data it is now very small. What happened to this red one and the green one? So, they actually increase in their component size and happened to the green one. So, this one also start increasing, this kind of very finely splitted doublet for the green one. This is at 80 Kelvin. What happens if you go further down, we go to 5 Kelvin and we saw nothing of this old peak over here, they are almost gone. What happens to this red and green? So, the red one actually remain over there. Oops. The red one remain over here. While the green one also start dominating. So, no stress of the original black stress, no signal from there. How do we explain this result? So, in the beginning I have only one set of data whereas, later on it split in two different sets of data, extra peaks coming out the red and green, the black is still staying and slowly only the red and green remains the black is totally gone. So, what is happening? So, the red one and the green one what are those? So, the red one is actually a iron 3 complex at low spin state and the green one is iron 2 in low spin state. So, why there is a shift in the quadrupolar splitting because this is almost very low splitted, this is the red one is quite highly splitted. So, why it is happening? That is actually remaining on the splitting energy. So, this one say it is quite close to an octahedral geometry. And the same thing happening for the iron 3 and try to see what is actually happening between iron 2 so, iron 3 versus iron 2. So, over here we can say this is the E g level, and this is the T 2 g level and over here what is actually happening we have iron 3 means D 5 system 
I and 2 means D6 system. So, over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because these are low spin systems present over here. Why low spin? That is we are coming into a little bit later because of the presence of the sulphides which is coordinated with this cobalt 3 plus system which is very strongly charged and that makes them very strongly charged system and over there the interaction is such that these become low spin system. The same thing happened over here D6 low spin system. So, over here you can see how they are actually behaving over here. So, that is how it is coming iron 2 and iron 3 and you can see iron 2 low spin system over here their valence contribution would be 0. So, valence electric field gradient will be 0 lattice gradient will be there because there are 3 sulfurs 3 nitrogens. So, that remains same for both of them. But in the case of Ap3 plus, in case of Ap3 plus, you can see there is an imbalanced charge dist distribution. So, valence EFG will be not equal to 0, lattice EFG is already not equal to 0. So, all together it is going to have a very asymmetric electric field gradient and that is going to show up over here and that is why iron 3 plus over you can see so widely distributed whereas in iron 2 plus only the electric field gradient of the lattice is coming plus balance is shut down. So, that is why they are very splitted in very small amount and that is how it is happening. And that is what we are seeing. So, now we know exactly what is iron 3 plus and iron 2 plus look like. What is the original splitting over here that we are seeing? What is that is represented? And that we found that it is somewhere in between of them. So, it is iron 2.5 plus. So, it is the delocalized system or mixed valence state. So, that is what we are showing over here. And what we found this iron 3 and iron 2 is coordinating in between them and how they are coordinating. So, let us draw me the structure. So, there is one iron center first over here and that is interacting with the sulfur. So, I am just drawing in such a way that I am going through this iron, sulfur, cobalt, sulfur, iron. So, this is over here. Now, this is interacting with this cobalt. This is another sulfur. So, I am just simply matching the phase of the orbitals. And then the last iron is there. And now you can see how the iron from one side can connect to the iron of the other side through this sulfurs and cobalt system. And we have a cobalt 3 plus system which is also low spin in nature. So, that means all its EG system is vacant. And that is can be come into handy over here. Say if there is in dx command so square kind of orbitals, it is going to come in handy and for exchanging electrons. So, this is actually say one electron that I am going to exchange to the sulfur which is filled, this is vacant, this is again sulfur filled, and this is where I want to put my electron. So, that can travel through that and reach the iron very easily and that is what is actually happening. And over here the orientation of the cobalt, sulfur and iron is very important so that the there is a proper matching of the orbitals and that is happening when we actually heat the system and enough dynamical flexibility is there so that they can achieve the orientation they want to have and they can exchange electron very fast and that is actually what is happening and we are seeing this mixed valence system. But as we start lowering the temperature, the iron centers 
stop interacting or exchanging because at lower temperature the sulphur and cobalt are not that much flexible so that you can attain all the particular orientation you want to have for this electron exchange. And as we go further lower temperature at 5 Kelvin where there is almost no interaction at all and you can say this mixed valence system is almost gone. However, it stays quite visibly even up till 80 Kelvin temperature. So, it shows that only a little bit of option you give to the iron to bridge through the sulphur, cobalt sulphur to the other iron, it will do that. So, if you want to totally stop it, you have to go to very low temperature, only then you will stop it. Otherwise, you are going to see this interaction. So, over here we can say we are seeing a delocalized mixed system which comes to a localized system only at very low temperature. So, it is temperature playing an important role in delocalization of electron. and which in turn is connected to the formation of mixed valence compound. So, that is one of the other examples we would like to cover in this particular segment. And now we move to our next example, example number 11, where we will cover an example from biology. So, previously we have discussed the iron sulfur clusters and over there we have discussed about rubidoxin and 2 iron 2 sulfur cluster which is known as the 2 iron 2 sulfur ferredoxin in short form we write them FDX and we have shown them how it looks like. So, just to refresh your memory this is actually coming in the following way. So, it is a 2 iron centers bridged with 2 sulphides and form this very nice diamond core, but the iron is coordinatively unsaturated. So, it have to cover this tetrahedral geometry around it and all the terminal ones are actually bound by cysteine, sulphur cysteine, which if you remember has the side chain. CH2SH which actually very readily form S minus and that is actually binding to this metal. So, it is a monodented ligand and that is what we are saying and we found this phaidoxins are actually electron transfer proteins. So, that is why they exchange electron and they can be in oxidized state and in the reduced state and we found in oxidized state it remained in iron 3, iron 3 and these are the proteins which typically exchange only one electron. So, the reduced state will be iron 3, iron 2. Now, the question is over here iron 3 and iron 2 I have 2 sulphides bridging ligand. Am I going to see a mixed valence system or they will be localized? So, for that we looked into the MOSBA spectra for this system. And what we found in the oxidized state, the value of isomership is 0.27 and quadrupolar splitting value is 0.6. Whereas, when you are looking into the reduced system, we actually get two signals, one at 0.35, one at, at 0.65 and let me draw it in this particular way. And the 0.35 signature has the quadrupolar splitting of 0.6, so it is kind of remaining on its original position, whereas the 0.651 that goes to 2.7. So, that is the quadrupolar splitting we are finding over here. So, that means what we are saying that when you are doing through this particular experiment, we are getting a system as such that 
that in the beginning it has a very narrowed quadruplet splitting over here, narrow quadrupolar splitting system. But when you go to the reduced form, now you are seeing two different signals. One is remaining almost similar, just move a touch on the positive side. In addition to that, it has an another signal whose midpoint is much more further down, so somewhere close to this and then they have a huge quadrupolar splitting. And all these bonds are in the ratio of 1 is to 1 and it is predicted that whatever you are seeing over here is different from this signature that you are seeing over here. So, this is for iron 3 plus system and the broadly splitted one is the iron 2 plus system. Now, the question comes why do we see this particular shift and for that we will just go a little bit back on this iron centers and try to find what we are seeing. So, if you look over here in the iron centers you will see there are two different iron centers possible one is iron 2 and iron 3 and they are in a tetrahedral geometry. In tetrahedral geometry signature is the following T2 and E say so it is the first I am looking into iron 3 system. They are always high spin in tetrahedral geometry mostly and there this is the iron 3 plus D5 system would look like and how it would look like for iron 2 D6 system everything safe except this one, one extra electron would come over here. And this is actually bringing a valence contribution to the EFG, whereas the same one for iron 3 plus is 0 because it is all symmetrically oriented. And that is what you are seeing the iron 3 plus is so narrowly splitted, iron 2 plus is quite widely splitted. So, this is something we have to look into, we have to find out what is the oxygen state and how we can distinguish that to find out how much quadruple splitting we are going to have and that is how it looks like. Now, there is another version of ion sulfur cluster which is known as Riesk protein and this is the 2 iron 2 sulfur FDX. And now, we are talking about something called Riesk protein and how it is different it is having the similar structure of the iron. We start with a bridging 2 iron 2 sulfur system and then over here it is bridged with cysteines and over here instead of cysteine now we have two histidines. So, that is the huge difference over here that over here you have two histidines over here instead of cysteine in the previous case and that is known as the Riesk protein. Now, the question is if this is actually happening how the Riesk protein signals will differ in the oxidized and the reduced case and what we found that iron centers are remaining in the same oxidation states the strategy remains same iron 3 3 to iron 3 2 and previously we have found that these signals are not showing any mixed valence system. So, they are all localized up. So, over here we can say it is mostly localized there is no delocalization possible or seen in this molecule. But what is happening in the Riesk protein that we are trying to find out over here and that is the systems we are seeing, we are seeing two different signals for oxidized one 0.24 and 0.32, 0.24 and 
and each of them have their own quadrupolar splitting one is 0.32, one is 0.91, sorry this will be 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 and then 0.91. So, that is what we are seeing. So, why you are seeing two different isomer shift now? Because now we have two different ion centers, one over here, other over here and one of them is actually FeS4 coordination whereas the other one over here is FeS2 N2 coordination. And this is going to showcase different electronic distribution on the iron centers and that is reflected on the MOS bus spectroscopy of the oxidized state. So, they are already separated. Now, which one is the histidine bound and which one of them is the cysteine bound? So, over here we can see that it is actually bound. So, let me I am just drawing this scaffold of histidine and cysteine. Let me draw it in the way I have drawn it over here. So, this versus these are the centers I am talking about. Now, over here which one of them will be different and why? So, what is the difference between over here? S cysteine versus N histidine. Now, N histidine is actually the imidazole ring that is come over here. Uh, I am going to the wrong place. So, through this it is probably going to bind or this one after the deprotonation. So, either of these two nitrogens are binding, but over here you can see typically it binds in its neutral stage. So, this N histidine is a neutral ligand, whereas S histidine we have already shown there, it is a charged system. So, now the charged system versus neutral which one of them is going to stabilize a oxidized iron system? The charged one through this interaction of iron ion interaction. So, that is why over here the iron 3 plus will be more prominent compared to this iron 3 plus over histidine that will be much more charged and the slight difference in the charge will showcase over here. So, one of them is 0 0.24, one of them is 0 0.32. So, 0 0.24 is the iron S4 system because it is on the much more charged side. So, more charge as we know it will move towards the negative side and 0 0.32 is the histidine side. So, it is the Fe2 S2 N2 coordination side. So, that is what is happening. Now, what happens when you go to the reduced system? In the reduced system also we are seeing two signals 0 0.31 and 0.74. 0.31 signature has a splitting of 0.63 and this one has a splitting of 3.05. So, previously also we can see the quadrupolar splitting. You can see this is much more higher 0.91, this is smaller 0.62. So, why this is higher? Because we are talking about a FES 2 and 2 system much more asymmetric compared to FES4 relatively symmetry. So, as you induce more symmetry in the coordination geometry, this is actually getting further splitted. And that is going to continue even in the reduced state where it is C2 signature. Now, which one I can actually confer like it is actually the N2S21 or S41. So, you can see the splitting and the value is remaining almost same for this iron 3 for this FES4 system. But this one 0.32 is pleated to 3.05 much more wider, even wider than what we expect for the normal 
2 iron 2 sulfur free reduction where all of them are sulfur even then it is going beyond that. So, that is actually coming because of the asymmetry related to Fe S2 N2. So, over here it is already large because we have already discussed Fe2 has the valence contribution from the EFG and not only that this Fe S2 N2 bringing more lattice electric field gradient over here which is actually shown the splitting on this particular side. And that is what we are getting for this 2 iron 2 sulfur cluster and the RSK protein. And this is actually showing us a very unique example how Mosbus spectroscopy can be found even with this particular molecule. And we can say like which one of them is actually exchanging the electron histidine site or the cysteine site. So, Mosbus spectroscopy without any doubt showing us that it is on the histine side which is actually exchanging the electron. And not only that we are also gaining an ideology how this change in the oxidation state and change in the coordination site can affect the overall isomer shift and quadrupolar splitting in Mosbus spectroscopy which is showcased in the spectra shown over here. And over here this is a very nice example how a biological sample can be assessed with Mosbus spectroscopy. And with that we will try to close over here for this particular segment and we will come with an another and final example of a biological sample of iron sulfur cluster and how we can distinguish about the different oxidation state and its orientation and probable mixed valency or not through Mosbus spectroscopy. And over here what we found these are all remain localized there is no mixed valency at all in 2 and 2 sulfur cluster or RSK protein. But is it going to remain same when I move to 4 and 4 sulfur cluster that we will take a look into the next segment. Thank you, thank you very much.